Hello, I'm Ellis Pratt from Cherry Leaf. Just put together a little presentation recording of an experiment we've done to look at something called ASCII Doc and see how it could be used to make the way in which proposals and reports could be done in a faster, more efficient way. So, what is this thing called ASCII Doc? It's a lightweight markup language. So it's similar to something called Markdown, if you've ever heard of that. Markdown languages are different from word processors like Microsoft Word in that you can just open up a text file, write content for your document using a particular formatting set of standards for doing things like headings and lists, and just save it with the extension that these lightweight markup languages use. In this situation for ASCII doc, it's with the extension .adoc, and you've just saved your ASCII doc file. So this means it's a lot quicker and faster than launching Word and waiting for Word to kick off. And with the lightweight markup languages, the way it looks, the look and feel, the formatting, the colors and size of the headings and so forth, are stored separately. Like with web pages, the contents for that type of thing is stored as a cascading style sheet file. The same type of thing happens with a lightweight markup language. So what this means is if you're copying and pasting content from one document to the next, you don't have some of the issues that you get with Word where the formatting comes with it and all your bulleted lists or your fonts start to suddenly go out of kilter. So ASCII doc is an alternative to Markdown. Markdown was probably the first lightweight markup language around and it began with a very limited set of features and as it grew in popularity people wanted it to do more and more and as a result there's been an introduction of new versions of Markdown with extra features. So rather than there being one generally accepted standard for what Markdown is, there's a number of different versions and flavors, some of which are supported by some tools or platforms and others which are not. So that causes some challenges in that the way in which you write your markdown file might not be supported by a place where you want those pages to appear. And also it still might not have all of the features and functionality that you would like it to have. So ASCII doc has come along. It's based on an XML standard and there's just one version of ASCII doc and it has a lot of features within it. So to use ASCII doc you can write content in any text editor that you like. So it could be notepad if you want or if you're a developer and you're using something like Atom or Sublime Text you can just write, open up a new tab, write your documentation as you're writing your code and hit save. There are some dedicated authoring tools such as one that we'll look at called ASCII doc FX and another one called brackets. These are two for the Macintosh, which give you the option of previewing what your content will look like when it's converted to be a PDF or converted to be a web page and so on. So the way in which you write content in ASCII doc is that you use some formatting codes to make certain elements headings or bulleted lists or numbered lists. And the formatting is a pretty simple and straightforward way of writing, pretty easy to remember. So for your title of your document, you just have one equal sign. If you're going to have a level one or a heading one, within your document, you do two equal signs, heading two or level two, three equal signs and so on. Normal text, you just start writing. If you want to have a bulleted list, you just use the asterisk key on your keyboard and you write your items, each one with an asterisk preceding the item. And when that is converted to HTML, or to a PDF that appears as a bulleted list. And if you want sub lists, so indented in a sub item in a bulleted list, you use two asterisks. And if you want a numbered list, one, two, three, four, five, and so on, you use the full stop or in American, the period symbol. 
And sometimes you want to control where the page breaks are so that one section ends and the next section begins. Now you can set it that there's a new page break at the start of every level one heading. Or alternatively, if you want to control specific places, you use the angle bracket sign. You do three of those and that generates the page break. And that's pretty much all the formatting instructions that you need to to be aware of and so from your ascii doc file what happens is to use it it runs through a conversion process built into some of the authoring tools like ascii doc.fx the capability of just saving as html or pdf or epub automatically you can also run a program called ascii doctor which can do that conversion for you with the command line. And that can be handy if you want to start automating the generation of documents. So you can output it to be a web page as HTML5, and you can apply different style sheets to things. So you can output a page to look like slides, such as the slides that we are looking at now. And you can also generate the content to look like a standard web page. And in fact, there are also tools that can generate web pages with left and right navigation, top navigation bar, and the like. So you might want to write your content in ASCII doc. We use that to generate a website. For proposals and reports, the most common thing is to generate it in a printed format as PDF. And as standard, you can generate your ASCII doc files to be PDFs like an article, which is probably how you'd want it to be for a sales proposal or report, or as a book. You can also generate to EPUB and to an XML standard called DocBook, which is also a way in which you can generate Word documents if you want. So let's look at some of the more advanced features that you have within ASCII doc. So one thing you can do within your page of text that you've written in ASCII doc is you can include text from another document in it. So what you can do is you can build a document, a proposal and the like, from a collection of other files or other pages. So in the context of writing a proposal or a report, what this means is you can delegate the writing to different people. You can include a legal page or a legal topic, and you can say to the legal department, here's the page, where we're going to have the information about the legal issues. If you write that content, what will happen is that will be included automatically into the report. If you've got people's CVs, these are the types of things that change over time. People acquire new skills or they go from having 10 years experience to 11 years experience. You can say to people, here's your profile. You keep it up to date when it changes your experience and so on. You change it. And then whenever we do a new proposal that will be automatically included. And price lists, you might want to include items like price lists or standard technical specifications, and they can be stored in a separate file, controlled by the people that know that particular information, and then that can be included, embedded as it were, in the document. So this is different from copying and pasting because if you copy and paste, one of the downsides is that you might not have the latest information that's coming across, and it can be quite time consuming. You might not have the correct source material to copy and paste. And of course, if anything changes between the time that you paste it into your document and you publish it, then that's not going to be reflected in your document. And so one approach for writing proposals is to have like a build page and this is a page for your document and what you do in that is you include all the different pages that you want in your proposal or in your report now the syntax or code for that is a little bit more complicated than it was for doing things like the bulleted lists what you do is you write the word include you use two colons and then you have the file name for the file that you want to include in your document and then an open and a closed square bracket another thing you can do within 
ASCII doc is you can have variables. So for example, you might create a standard report or a standard proposal and in it you include the company name or the contact name at different points. And of course, within every different proposal or report, the company name is likely to change. So what you can have is in your document reference to a variable. And the way that you have that is you use the curly brackets for that variable. And then either at the top of the document or within a separate file in a separate topic, you define what that variable will be. And the way in which the variables are written is you have a colon, the name of the variable, and another colon, and then what that value is. So if you've got a variable all the way through your document called company, then either in a, at the top of the document or within a separate variables topic, you would have company, colon, and then the name of the company. So that's great for things like somebody's name, contact name, or a product or service. So it's like a mail merge as you would have in Word. Another feature that can happen within proposals is that you don't want standard text for every proposal. Some people are in different scenarios, different situations, and you want the text to adjust. It might be they're in a different country, and therefore the contact names for that country might change, or the services available in that country might change. Or you might have a proposal for different products and services. So you might have one collection of services which relate to writing policies and procedures and another set of services about writing end user documentation. If you're a technical writing company like Cherryleaf is. And things like the client list might vary depending on what it is that somebody wants to buy. And the case studies that you might have might vary depending again on the situation or the scenario. So you can mark up text within the document and say this is relevant to one condition and this is relevant to another condition. So for example, if we take the example of policies and we want to say this is the text that we want to appear when somebody is interested in our policies service, then what we can do is tag it using this markup, and then that can be identified as relevant to the situations when somebody's interested in the policy service. And then what we can do is in our variables file, if we say that the policies exists, then this bit of text will appear in our finished document. That's one way we can do it. There are a number of different ways you can use conditional text. So, We'll look at an example where we've put this all together, the idea of a build page, a page with different variables and some conditional text. So let me walk you through how we created this proposal using ASCII doc. And so we have about 11 pages of content with a header and some page numbers at the bottom. So we talked about a build file. And what we have is we have a document, a build file that is used for every new proposal. And in it, you've got all the different pages that need to be included in the proposal. Every page effectively is a separate file. And at the top is some instructions on the locations of certain files. One of those is a cover page, which includes the logo and the company address and information like that. In the cover page is a command for including a table of contents in the document, which appears in the build file. Now, within this build file, there are some topics which are going to be unique to the particular proposal or report that you're writing. Things like the understanding what a client needs or a client's time scales, or how you propose to deliver the solution. So there might be a topic about the understanding of what the client needs. And this might be blank and the person that's writing the report or proposal just creates the content from scratch. Or there might be some text to 
guide them through writing that particular section. There are other pages which you want in every proposal, things like the legal information. And we store information that is going to be used across lots of different proposals in a separate folder, what we normally call an inclusions folder. So things like people's CVs or text that always appears like the next step that you want a purchase order or the legal information or common information about the company itself that doesn't really change, then we have that in the inclusions folder. So here, for example, is the standard legal information about the payment terms. Some pages have text that's tagged for different situations. So, for example, when describing the company, we have text that emphasizes a certain service. It could be policies. And then for those more generic proposals or reports, some alternative text that would appear instead. All the variable information and the conditions that we want to set, we store in a single file. And this we call the variables file. And this could potentially be generated by having a form that a customer or a salesperson, depending on the type of document you're creating, that they fill in on a website or elsewhere. And as a consequence of that form being filled in, a variables document is automatically generated and placed in the appropriate place. So in this example, the variables file will be filled in by a salesperson. And the types of variables are things like the company name, the contact person, what's being proposed, when it's going to be need to be delivered, the date of the proposal, that type of information. And then one condition which varies for this particular proposal. And in the green text, we've got guidance how to turn on or off that particular condition. And that condition is whether this is a proposal promoting services around writing policies or a more general proposal. So at the moment, this is set to say, yes, this is going to be a document that's suggesting or proposing the client gets policy writing services. So as a consequence of that, in the case studies, we have a case study that appears, which is about writing policies. If we change that variable to be off, we could have yes or no, we're using a way of doing it like this. And we go to where the case studies was previously, that text has now changed. And instead of having a case study about writing policies, we've got more general quotations from clients because the page that we have about case studies has been marked up. If it's not the condition for policies, then we have quotations. If it is then about policies, then we have a case study about policy writing it appear. Okay, so if we want to create the PDF, what we do is we generate a build file as a PDF document. So we go to PDF in this particular tool, hit save as. That could be generated automatically if you wanted by using ASCII Doctor instead of the built-in saving and publishing capabilities of the tool that we're using in this situation. And here's what's generated from ASCII.FX when you save as a PDF and you have it set to be an article and not a book. So this is using the standard template and the standard fonts and look and feel and so on that come with the application. You can go in and adjust the publishing template so that it has different fonts, different sizes and so on that you might want to have the logo appear in the header or have the page numbers in a different place. You can do all of that. But in this situation, this is just straight out the box how it would look. So just to summarize what the benefits are of taking this approach, it's fast. You can just write when you need using a text editor.
very quickly, you can just open it up and then save that document with that ASCII doc extension. And the tools that have some of the previews for ASCII doc built in and automatically can convert the ASCII doc files to be PDFs or to be web pages are free. And you can do a lot with it. It's quite flexible in the way in which you can set conditions and how the content appears. You can have content presented as slides and you can have content presented as web pages. And it's pretty easy to learn. It doesn't take too long to learn that syntax. And what you can do is you can build up a collection of topics that can be reused across different situations, different documents. And if you make a change in those collections of topics, those included files, then that will ripple through to all of the future documents that are required. And you can start to run scripts to generate the documents with certain conditions. So you potentially you can have a form on your website that says, you tell us which country you're in or which product you're interested in or service. And that can then set the variables for the variable file. And then when it's published, it will publish a version of the document specific, personalized to that particular end user. Now, some downsides to it. It doesn't have the capability that you get with tools that have built in link management and content management, where if a file name changes, it adjusts all the links so that the document still works. If you change a file name in your collection of files, then that file won't be included when you go to generate your document. It has some limited spell checking, but not the sophistication that you get with Word. And with the tools like ASCII-Doc.fx, there is a preview, but it's not WYSIWYG in the same way that it is with Word. And there is a little bit of syntax around that needs to be done to do this more sophisticated publishing, which is a bit more technical than Word. So that's really the example that we've put together. We're going to make the files available free of charge to people that subscribe to our advanced writing courses. If you want to build it yourself, you can review the video and go back and you can see how we created and built the files. But if you've got any specific questions, then you're more than welcome to email us. It's info at